Back in 2011, Samsung achieved what many thought impossible. It popularized the concept of the smartphone-tablet hybrid with the original Galaxy Note. One year later, it built on that success by consumerizing the concept with the sleeker, more powerful Galaxy Note 2. This fall, the company looks to up the ante again with an even heavier feature set mated to some of the biggest, baddest hardware available. But in a world of steadily ballooning smartphone dimensions, does the Note 3 have what it takes to stand out? Let's find out. I'm Michael Fisher, this is Pocket Now, and this is our video review of the Samsung Galaxy Note 3. Before we get started, we'll remind you, as we did in our other Galaxy Note 3 videos, that our review unit comes to us by way of Negri Electronics. Be sure to visit them if you're looking for a Note 3 of your own, and be sure to follow Pocket Now on social media so you don't miss future coverage on high-end smartphones and tablets. As we noted in our video comparing the Note 3 with its immediate predecessor, Samsung promised that its latest phablet would come in slimmer, faster, lighter, longer, and larger than the Note 2. And this being Samsung, those apparently contradictory terms actually can coexist in the same device. Since 60% of that adjective dump deals with physical dimensions, let's start this review by taking a look at the Note 3's hardware. After a flirtation with wide radius corners and gentle curves, Samsung has returned to a more straightforward design aesthetic with the Note 3, recalling the days of the original Note and the Galaxy S2. Squared off corners joined with the usual faux metal trim elements and a subtly patterned surface to deliver a familiar look on the front, but turning the Note 3 over reveals a welcome surprise. Gone is the glossy, tacky hyperglaze coating of old, replaced by a special battery cover made to resemble leather. It's a bit rigid and slippery on our white unit here, but the black version has a more rubbery texture that's easier to hold on to. In either case, you get the same custom stitching on the border, the same fine stripes on the sides, meant to represent the pages of a notebook. The motif may be a little on the nose for some people, but we like it. It helps set the note line apart from the Galaxy S devices, making it stand out as something entirely different, which it really is. Also playing a role in that setoff, the massive 5.7-inch AMOLED display, which at 1080p resolution kicks out a pixel density of 386 ppi. For a screen this big, that's a pretty hefty pixel count, and it combines with excellent color reproduction and customizable saturation settings to make this one of the finest panels around. It's squeezed so tightly into the Note 3's casing that the housing itself actually comes in smaller in nearly every dimension than the Note 2, and it's lighter as well. A remarkable achievement, to be sure. But make no mistake, it's still a huge smartphone. One-handed use is possible, but to make the most of the phone, you probably want to keep both hands free, especially if you're using the new and improved S Pen, which we'll come back to in a sec. Samsung has always used the Note line as an opportunity to bring the highest end specs possible, and the Note 3 is no exception. Our unit, the SMN900, packs the so-called Exynos Okta chipset, but other versions run Qualcomm's Snapdragon 800 at 2.3 GHz. Either way, these are top-of-the-line systems, backed up by 3 gigs of RAM and either 32 or 64 gigs of storage, powered by a battery rated at 12.16 watt-hours. As usual for Samsung, that battery is removable and user-replaceable, hooray, as is the optional microSD card, which can accommodate up to 64 gigs of additional storage, hooray again. Rounding out the class-leading feature set is support for Wi-Fi ABGN and AC, USB 3.0 for faster charging and data transfers, an IR port for controlling your home media system, and a sensor suite that includes thermometer, hygrometer, and barometer. Finally, the Wacom digitizer returns on the Note 3, giving the display the pressure sensitivity that makes the S Pen work. And Samsung's special stylus works better than ever before here. The magic wand has gotten a slight aesthetic overhaul and now fits into its silo in two orientations, and also the nub at its tip has been reworked to deliver a softer, firmer touch, which feels nice. And the pen now triggers the capacitive back and menu keys. But the real story is in software, where Samsung has instituted a new interface element called Air Command. The circular jump menu is straightforward and clean, and it packs equal parts useful features and a little bit of chrome. Applications like the system-wide search in S-Finder and the scrapbook crop collector are quite handy. Other functions, like Action Memo, 
seemed better suited to showroom stunt than daily time saver, and the pen window action that lets you open apps in custom sized windows is definitely cool, but it's less useful than Samsung's other multitasking feature. Fortunately, multi window is still here, and it's been improved further. You can still run apps side by side on the big screen, and you can now copy and paste text from one screen to another using the more streamlined interface, which also now supports custom window presets. So if you always find yourself opening Twitter and YouTube together, you can now set a shortcut to open them both, which is a big time saver. The rest of Samsung's heavy UI layer is still here, and it's loaded with more features than ever. Whiz-bang stuff like air gesture, smart scroll, and smart pause have been ported from the Galaxy S4, yes. But more interesting is the addition of Samsung's Flipboard-powered My Magazine, which lives under the home screen. Its performance is quite slow. It takes more than a second to launch and several seconds to update, and out of the box it appears every time you hit the home button more than once, which is pretty annoying. But it's essentially an omnipresent Flipboard app, and as such, it's a pretty cool addition. Elsewhere on the Note 3, more of the same. Samsung goes out of its way to bring some value adds here, and some are really cool. We're happy to see the fitness monitor S Health make the cut, and Sketchbook for Galaxy is an incredibly powerful and fun app for use with the S Pen. Other areas, like the Me Too Samsung Hub content store, and the various overdone memo apps, could use some refinement or retiring. In any case, here the good overrides the bad. The software add-ons are enough to cement the Note 3's position as the most useful phablet out there. Testing the Galaxy Note 3 over the course of six days in the greater Boston area was a near total pleasure in terms of overall performance. Of course, with the Exynos Okta chipset, our N900 had zero problems with even the most strenuous of games. Modern Combat 4 and Asphalt 8 ran without a hitch, with graphics rendered so beautifully that tearing ourselves away from the action to write this review was honestly tougher than usual. Benchmark results were similarly outstanding, and day-to-day -day responsiveness, barring the occasional jump or stutter, was usually swift and speedy. But the phone did hang on us twice during the test period, freezing on the home screen for no apparent reason and requiring a forced restart. We haven't seen that behavior mirrored on other devices in the blogosphere, but it was too ominous not to mention. We'll test other variants of the Note 3 as we get them, and report on the problem if it recurs. The phone call quality is solid on both ends, on AT&T's 3G network, a big improvement over recent Samsung phones, with the earpiece producing crisp sound and the volume boost feature coming in handy for speakerphone calls which are otherwise too quiet. Even with maxed out volume, the Note 3's small speakerphone isn't as loud or as bassy as we'd prefer for media. Fortunately, sound through the earbuds is considerably better, and Samsung has built in its special adapt sound feature here to dynamically alter levels based on the ambient environment. On the camera front, the 13 megapixel shooter bolted to the phone's backside is a significant upgrade to last year's model. Samsung's versatile viewfinder software makes finding the right shooting mode very easy most of the time, and the result is photos that are nothing short of brilliant in the right lighting. We especially enjoyed the sports mode, with its faster shutter speed allowing for fast motion capture, and HDR and animated photo are always a welcome sight as well. Despite the narrow field of view that forced us to back away from our subject to catch photos, we enjoyed shooting with the Note 3 in broad daylight and well-lit indoor scenarios, but we're flabbergasted that the company has opted to remove its nighttime shooting mode from the menu replacing it with a confusing smart stabilization option buried in the settings menu. If you don't have this turned on, be prepared for some really low quality night shots. Once you throw the switch, though, things get much better. Video performance renders very sharp footage in 1080p mode. Our N900 unit here doesn't feature the 4K recording mode on other models. And the software stabilization is actually quite good, though indoor shots tend toward the noisy side. While it takes longer than we'd like to launch the camera software, it's worth the wait thanks to the various shooting modes and the relatively easy to use interface.
Taken as a whole, the Note 3's shooter isn't the best camera we've used on a smartphone, but it's also far from the worst. Also far from the worst, battery life. Even with hardcore high-end gaming and heavy browsing, we were able to get more than a day's use out of the Note 3, and that's saying a lot for a phone with a 1080p display this large. Altogether, the Note 3 lives up to its legacy in a big way. It improves on the Note 2 in almost every meaningful sense, and it even manages to stand apart from its fellow Samsung devices functionally and aesthetically, something not easily done in the company's watered-down world where nearly every smartphone bears the Galaxy moniker. While we'd like to have seen a stronger focus on quality over quantity in the feature set and a streamlining of the S Pen functionality, these are minor quibbles. If you're buying a large-screened Android device, you want utility to go along with the added scale. And right now, the Galaxy Note 3 is absolutely the most capable, most powerful smartphone-tablet hybrid on the market. Accordingly, PocketNow scores it a 9 out of 10. PocketNow's official written review of the Galaxy Note 3 will be available at pocketnow.com starting October 1st. Be sure and check back for that. But before you go anywhere, please like this video if you didn't enjoy our video review. Drop a comment down below if you have some feedback or additional questions. And be sure to follow us on social media so you don't miss more on the Galaxy Note 3 and other devices from PocketNow. Until next time, this has been Michael Fisher. Thank you very much for watching, and we'll see you soon.